Today is going to be one epic DIY kitchen build. I'm helping my friend Melissa Maker with a new kitchen table. This was part of a much larger series called Buy or DIY, which you can check out here, but this is behind the DIY. Before we get into making this DIY table, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do and support the Coral family. All the materials for this DIY table have been listed below and you can find it at thecoralchannel.com, which gives you a full step-by-step -step breakdown. What I have in front of me is a maple plywood. This was a four by eight sheet, which I got cut in half. Most hardware stores will cut this wood for you and make that trip home a lot easier. So now what we need to do is attach both of those pieces together. We're making an ice cream sandwich, but basically it's with wood glue and two pieces of wood. It's delicious. To make sure I cover enough space, I'm gonna spiral this, just like a piece of wood. I'm gonna need an extra set of two hands. Popped the other piece on top and I clamped it down. Gave it some weight in the middle using some heavy pieces sitting around the studio. Whatever you gotta do, just make sure there's lots of weight in the middle of that table. Ideally, you wanna let this sit for probably 24 hours just to make sure all the wood glue is cured. So we're gonna set this aside, work on the other part of the table, and we'll come back to it later. To make this project completely cost effective, I decided to build the base of my table using conduit pipe. I sourced four half inch conduit pipes at 10 feet long. I'm making my marks at 27 inches and 54 inches on both sides of the pipe, clamping it down, using a scrap piece of wood underneath, making sure it's nice and secure, and I'm cutting it using a reciprocating saw and a metal cutting blade. Bam! Just like that, and cut through. So once you're finished cutting through all four conduit pipes, you're basically gonna end up with cuts like this. You should have 16 in total. And what I've gone and done ahead of time was spray painted them in this beautiful gold spray paint. Behind the scenes, in the dark depths of my garage, I simply sanded the conduit pipe down. The goal is to make the conduit pipe a little scratched up and rough. To spray paint them and make sure that it was nice and even, what I did was <laughs> I took a screw, I tied a string to it, ran the screw all the way through, and basically created a T-bar effect and then hung it. If you guys have a better way to do this, let me know in the comment section. Let those dry overnight and make sure you spray them with a nice clear finish spray to make sure that spray paint is locked in. All right, so let's build a base. So I have two 18 inch rounds in front of me and one 24 inch round. So this is basically gonna make up the base of my table. I'm using a template I created ahead of time to ensure all my holes are exactly the correct distance apart from each other for all 16 conduit pipes. When you have this paper, you're gonna cut out the little circles. Make sure that this template fits right on top and equal parts around. Tape down all the edges to make sure it's nice and secure. Take your pencil and I'm just going to mark my drill points. So we just need a scrap piece of wood. I'm gonna protect my tabletop. I don't really wanna drill a hole through it. All right, so what I have here is the 11 17 Forstner bit. If you actually look up the true size of a half inch conduit pipe, it is not a true half inch. The 11 17 is the appropriate size to fit a half inch conduit pipe, so that's what we're going with. And I'm drilling all the way through, making sure I'm completely straight, trying to keep your arm at a 90 degree angle to the best of your ability. Love the smell of pine in the morning. Been pining for it. Ta-da! Basically like a 16 hour clock. Place it on top of your second 18 inch diameter wood round and trace out your circles on your second round. Mark the holes using some kind of number system so that you don't forget which hole is meant to match up together. I'll mark this side B. Now, if all your holes don't line up perfectly, you might wanna just lie one on top of each other and then just drill through. Sand our two rounds plus our 24 inch diameter round using a 220 grit sandpaper. Kinda looks like a snowman from up top. Pre-stain your boards before so that you avoid blotchiness and to make sure that you have a nice even stain. So I'm just gonna give this like 20 minutes, let it dry, and then we'll stain. Stain your boards to the color of your liking. I've gone with a beautiful chestnut brown.
great. Hmm. Now our snowman's just a little bit more rustic. Coming back to our glue tabletop, I'm removing the clamps and putting it on two sawhorses. Make sure you put it on a surface that gives you a 360 all the way around your board. To make a perfect circle on my table, I had to find the center point. Mine is a four by four square, which means that my center point is at 24 inches. There are instruments out there that can help you make a perfect circle, but I do not have that instrument, so I had to, of course, DIY a compass. So what I've used is a one by two. I drilled a hole through it that can fit a nail and attached one side to the middle point of my table with a nail and used a second nail attached to the other end. Now I just have to pivot the arm all the way around the table, scribing a perfect circle. Now, I know it's really hard to see. You could sketch a very faint line. To cut my tabletop, I'm using a jigsaw. I'm carefully running it all the way around. We have a round table. Mm, 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 mm. We have a round table. Once you've cut your entire tabletop out, sand the entire thing down and the edges until it's nice and smooth. To create that nice rounded look on my table, I'm using a router and a corner round bit. Round both the top and bottom edge of your tabletop to give it a smooth rounded finish. I know it looks a little bit wobbly, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our sander and we're just gonna smooth it all out. I have a layer of sawdust on all parts of my body right now. Sanding's done, pre-staining as we always do, because you never stain without pre-stain. This is so cool, I'm making a table. So once this pre-stain is dry, I'm gonna flip it over, do the other side, and then we can stain. We've got a cotton ray, we've got our brown chestnut in the direction of the grain, as you do. Once your stain is dry on your tabletop, make sure you apply a nice finish to it to make it strong and durable for everyday wear and tear. We're moving on to our base. Let's put our pipes in. Fitting the pipes should be a little tight. This might take a little finagling, but it will go through. So now I'm just looking at my numbered system to make sure that both of these line up. Okay, so one needs to be this far here. Not bad. What I'm taking is a super strong adhesive and applying it around the pipe fittings. This is just gonna create a nice tight seal. Then once you're happy with that, I'm taking my 24 inch round, I'm centering it and I'm just securing the two rounds together using a two inch wood screw. Flip it over. All you need to do is make sure that the pipe is completely flush with your wood round. You ever played whack-a-mole? This is what this is. <laughs> Again, I'm adding some strong adhesive glue around the edges of the conduit pipe. And now all we need to do is attach our tabletop. Da, 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 da. I've measured all the way around to make sure that I was directly in the center. This might take one or two measurements and going back and forth on each side, but the effort is worth it. Attach your tabletop using a two inch wood screw all around that 18 inch round. All right, we made a table. For now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move on to my chairs. I am, I'm blown away. I went to my local thrift store and I found these beautiful rattan chairs that didn't really have the nicest seating, but that's okay because I'm gonna reupholster them. I have sourced this beautiful blue velvet. It's got a short nap on it, so it's gonna be really good for removing cat hair. So to reupholster it, I'm simply taking the screws off the bottom of my chair just gonna pop this off. So we have our frame, which we can put to the side. The seat's in pretty good condition, and I think I'm gonna save some effort, and I'm just gonna take the material and just cover right over top of this. And because of this velvet, the sheen kind of works in a certain direction, and I wanna make sure that matches across all four. So I've marked the bottom on this piece so that I know that this is the right direction. I've marked three inches away from my seat all the way around on the fabric using a fabric chalk. Now simply cut it out using fabric scissors, 
pull this nice and tight. I'm using my staple gun and I'm gonna do three staples on the top. You wanna work all your way around, kind of wrapping it like a Christmas present. Now I'm just gonna go through, smooth out any of my edges. Now I'm just gonna take my upholstery mesh and I'm basically just going to trace all the way around my cushion being very careful not to get it on my velvet. And what I love about upholstery mesh is that it's really easy to do and it's gonna give your whole piece a really nice professional looking finish. So now I'm going to just fold the lip down and I'm gonna cover over where my staples were just on the inside, pop a staple there. I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side. But look at that, so we have an entire surface, a beautiful, professional-looking new seat top. All in all, this DIY is beautiful. It's modern, it's sleek, it has elegant metal touches with warm wood tones. If you're looking for that high-end look for a fraction of the cost, then this DIY is the perfect one for you. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you love this project, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to check out all this other extra amazing content we have going on in the channel.